Hi. So this video is going to be talking about Hannah Moskowitz's play East of Berlin. Um, it's a really interesting exploration of generational guilt or transgenerational guilt. Um, I, I've encountered a number of other uh, different artworks, poetry, novels, whatever it is, that sort of explore this experience of the children of Nazis. So people who themselves were not Nazis and had nothing to do with World War II, but have grown up with parents who uh, participated in the Holocaust or served in the German army in World War II or, or whatever it is. Um, and so this is in that same kind of vein. Um, this is, for the most part, the first person narrative uh, with other characters interspersed of uh, a guy named Rudy, Rudolf. Um, his father, so they, they uh, grew up, he grew up in Paraguay, Rudy grew up in Paraguay, um, in a German community, a community that was pretty unapologetically uh, pro-Nazi, even though this is, this is after World War II. Um, Rudy knows that his father was a medic uh, in, in the German army in World War II. What he doesn't know until partway through the play is exactly what his father did uh, as a medic. Um, he finds out, largely because his friend finds it in a book and, and tells him, uh, he finds out that his father was um, a surgeon at Auschwitz concentration camp, uh, which for those of you who, who don't know that much about the Holocaust, um, Auschwitz was one of the most brutal and inhumane camps where uh, the doctors regularly did uh, medical experiments on prisoners, especially Jewish prisoners. Um, so they would do things like uh, attempt to change the color of people's eyes by injecting dye into their into their eyes. Uh, they would perform surgery on people without anesthesia to try and sort of gauge. Uh, pain thresholds. They would uh, so they would attempt to do uh, organ transplants and things like this, it without really sort of having the 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 technology or the science there. Um, and one of the things that they did was they would infect prisoners with diseases in order to study the course of the disease under controlled conditions. Um, and Rudy finds out <clears throat> that this is the, the thing that his father did uh, during the war, was he injected, or he, he infected prisoners with diseases in order to study the course of, of that disease. And It's this, finding this out is this, is this psychologically shattering moment for Rudy because his father is this very, uh, the, the father that he knows is this very sort of ordinary, soft-spoken, going to work every day, um, almost British type, like you think of the, the sort of 60s, 50s, 60s uh, sort of British guy in his like bowler hat and, and umbrella and stuff. Um, 
just this very like normal basic routine guy and the difficulty of finding out that during the war he was this he was this inhuman monster and like he chose to go and do that um breaks Rudy psychologically in a way and like he he decides that he needs to leave Paraguay and he needs to leave this community uh, that he's grown up in um, and so he, he actually goes back to Germany um, interestingly enough um, through a, a program set up by uh, ex-Nazis, Nazi sympathizers, etc., etc., to funnel money to uh, Nazis or the children of Nazis uh, to, to allow them to live their new post-World War II lives. Um, so he's in Germany um, and he meets and falls in love with this Jewish woman. Um, and he he tell he does tell her that his father was a Nazi, but he doesn't tell her what exactly he had done. Um, and the fact that uh, his father is actually wanted by the Israelis uh, because uh, you may or may not know this either after the war uh, after the state of Israel was set up one of the things that they did uh, I think one of the sort of early jobs of, of the Mossad uh, intelligence service although it may have been a different agency but was uh, to hunt down prominent Nazi war criminals who had escaped um, and Rudy's father is wanted by the Israelis for crimes against humanity um, and so that relation like their their relationship her name is sarah by the way so rudy and sarah their relationship is a deeply committed one like they are they are deeply committed to one another uh her family does not want him want them to get married because he's not jewish um and he's not from the u.s she's an american jew uh, from new york who'd gone to Berlin to, to, to look through the archives um, from the Holocaust. Um, her family is not at all on board with them getting married, but she's willing to, to defy them to marry him. But then his friend from Paraguay, the one who had given him uh, the book with the information about his father, uh, arrives um, basically on the evening of their of their wedding and tells her who he actually is and who his father is and she leaves him and so we end with Rudy going back to Paraguay which is actually where he begins the play. Like he begins having arrived, uh, we assume, to confront his father. And we end there as well. Um, and it's... We actually do get a resolution, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna spoil it for you. Um, but we have this exploration of the the ongoing destruction the sort of cyclical destruction of the Holocaust and of World War two 
with an almost sort of biblical, like the sins of the father being visited on the son kind of kind of thing. In that, Rudy's life is continually, like periodically, but continually destroyed, continually uprooted in these traumatic experiences, all of which ripple outward from what his father had done in the war. So it's a really interesting exploration of guilt and how guilt carries on after, uh, even beyond the, the immediately guilty person.